outside wanted to listen. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kern Dooley. I am a funeral director on staff here at David Funeral Home, and I'm also here um, as a minister of the Lord, doing the Lord's work. Uh, I believe the Bible has uh, scripture. God has a very special place for widows and orphans and anyone who is struggling with grief. And so um, today I prepared a short message, uh, hopefully a message of comfort um, at a time like this. And so first of all, guys, I want to ask, uh, if you would, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our presence, and I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to first uh, pray. So let's pray, y'all. Thank you for every story, especially the funny stories of mummy that will echo in their hearts forever. Father, thank you for this precious family, and thank you for the undeniable love within them. Keith has enriched all of their lives, and today, Father, we have to make sense of things. Today we have to attempt to put pieces together that seem to have fallen apart and shattered our worlds. The best place for us to be is in your word. So Father, bless your word and the way we receive it. Holy Spirit, come into this place and make your presence known. Send us comfort, Father God. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, Jesus spoke um, in Matthew 5 and verse 4, and he said that God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So I just know that each and every one of your presence here has been felt by Miss Angela and by his mom and all of you. Um, we stick together in these times. It brings us comfort. And, um, and so um, when we refer to the Bible, we can't help but reference the wisest man who ever lived, and his name is King Solomon. King Solomon said it is better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. After all, everyone dies, so the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. I know personally that as a young man at the age of 17, I lost my father to cancer. It was the hardest thing I had ever gone through. I learned that tragedy carries so many questions, but it also awakens our soul to what really matters. In this business, I have a very unique perspective. I have had people come into my office that have just found out that they have stage four cancer. They have come in to make funeral arrangements. They are not concerned with money or material things. They are so tuned in to what really matters. What matters is love. Out of all the pastors, priests, ministers, men of God, I am humbled to have been selected to deliver a message at Mummy's funeral. How did I get selected? Why am I qualified? Well, my father had to die to give me life. My, co my qualification came from tragedy. I didn't just go through it, I learned to grow through it. Grief is like a fingerprint. We all have our own unique way of dealing with grief. Never are our emotions more vulnerable than a, in a time of grief. You know, Jesus said in John 13 and verse 7, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Solomon also said sadness has a refining influence on us. So today, we have to find the truth in all of this. We have to find God in all of this. You know, I never understood why my dad died. If I'm being honest, there was a season in my life that I turned to alcohol, drugs, and prescription medication to get me through it. But years later, I began to dig into the Word of God and realize that on the date of my dad's passing, which was 518, I would come across a scripture that brought me so much comfort. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. 
And that says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. And you belong to Jesus Christ. Y'all, that brought me so much comfort. Years later, it's like there were these little breadcrumbs. It's a rainbow. It's a dove. It's a cardinal. It's a butterfly. It's something that comes at the most tragic times and the most vulnerable times driving in a car. It's a cloud. It's the sun rays beaming through the clouds. Silver linings in the clouds. It's stars. It's the shape of the moon. If you look for it, if you get outside of your grief, guys, and you sincerely look for answers, your Heavenly Father, He, he wants to love you. He loves you guys so much. Um, in James, verses, um, chapter 1 and verses 2 through 4, James also writes about this. And, and y'all, I, just, I have trouble understanding this at times. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Wait, what? Yeah. What? That doesn't make sense, God. Why? He says, for you know that when your faith is tested, mm -hmm. your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Mm -hmm. For your endurance is fully developed. You will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Again, don't just go through it. Grow through it. So just as the promise is above, we will go through trials. We will have our faith tested. That's a promise of God. So we can either learn to adapt to the trials and learn to have some scriptural Holy Ghost influence, or we can continue to influence our lives with alcohol and everything else like I did. There has to be a deeper meaning to life. Tragedy can happen so fast. But the definition of why seems to come so slow. Tragedy. Why? Ten years. Why, God? Why, God? The what happens just like this. What happened? Just like that. In the blink of an eye. But oh, the why. Oh, the why seems to take so long. Like Jesus said, you don't understand what I'm doing, but someday you will. Here is what Isaiah says. Isaiah says, good people pass away. The godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from an evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. I had never had the opportunity to see the picture that was right here beside his casket of him in a boat in his glory and his passion and his love. But what a beautiful cross in the background in the sky. And, and y'all, to think that the timing of when that picture was taken, the person that was riding in the boat, when they woke up that morning had no idea that behind them was going to be the cross of Christ to remind us in this tragic moment. You understand the timing and, and the beauty of that architecture, how that picture was taken and then his passing while he was at work for it to be displayed by beside his casket. It, it may not be beautiful right now, Miss Angela. One day, like myself, you are going to look back on all of this stuff and you're going to say, wow, God. It, it truly is beautiful. But your plans are beautiful. Why? It says it right here. To protect them from evil that is to come. That could be within our own family. That could be in our extended family. We don't know. But Father, we trust you. Father, we trust you. There's times I just drop to my knees and say, God, I trust you. And scream to God that I trust him. How can we understand what happened here? on the early morning of February 28th, 2018. Tragedy happens fast. Definition happens slow. But there comes a time when God does answer the questions. We do realize what really matters in life and how oftentimes it takes death to wake us up. 
There are only a few death scenes in the Bible. You know why? Because God is more concerned with the way that we live our lives than the way that we die. Life happens so fast and it ends just like that. Not only is life fast, but sometimes it is wasted. There is not a person here that doesn't wish they can take back a day, a weekend, or a moment that changed the course of their life. A do-over. God cannot please have a do-over. The answer to that is yes. He is the God of second chances. He is the God of grace and mercy. In an instant, just like that, our life took a different course. I want to share something with you, um, especially with the sudden psych, uh, physiological death of, uh, of Mr. Mummy and, and, his, uh, and his massive heart attack. When I was in college, I took a course of anatomy and physiology, and physiology, okay? And at the time, I'm in this course with future doctors and nurses. We were all students with an aspiration to become something more. None of us were licensed yet but I was literally in the presence of future surgeons and everything else. And I can remember we're in a room with cadavers and their chest was open wide. We were studying the anatomy of the vascular system and the heart. And we walked up to the cadaver and the professor came beside me and he pointed out a little tiny thread right on the heart. He said, you see that yellow thread? That is the number one killer. Just a tiny thread, he said. If that thread gets clogged, you die of a heart attack. I can remember thinking, that's it. I got it. That is how fragile we are. I can tell you, being a Cajun from Delcom, sometimes I live my life like that thread was the size of a Mississippi River eating whatever I want, drinking whatever I want, doing whatever I wanted to do as if life was just, I was running and gunning. Like I was invisible, y'all. But we are so precious and fragile in the hands of God. You are a temple of the living, breathing spirit of God. As we, as we look and we walk in the cemetery, we look to headstones. We see the dash. What is in the dash? How did we choose to live this very precious life, this valuable life? What is the story of the dash? I find it so profound to walk in a cemetery. How many books are unwritten in there? How many cookbooks are unwritten? How many apologies are in the grave and never actually walked it out and go apologize and seek forgiveness? <clears throat> Forgiveness is the highest level of spiritual order there is. What happened in the dash? Did we hug? Did we love? Did we forgive? Did we laugh? It's funny how tragedy can make us so spiritual, so awake and desperate for the hand of God. Maybe you are here today Maybe this is the first time you've heard a message in a long time. Maybe you are struggling. You are searching for answers. Guys, I want to extend an invitation to you. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what you've gone through, how you're here, why you're here. The truth is, is that God brought you here for a divine appointment today. He wants to extend an invitation towards you. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So guys, I want to pray this out. I want to take this opportunity for everyone. Please, everyone, bow their heads. Close their eyes. No one in here looking except for God. God sees you. God knows what's on your heart. If you are struggling with the grief, if there are burdens on your heart, if you need the assistance from the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, humility, 
long suffering and self control. Father, if you, there are people in here that need your spirit, Father God. They need the comfort, Lord Jesus. They are crying out in desperation. If that is you, I just want to ask you to lift your hands, raise them up to the Lord today. Let Lord, let the Lord see you in your attempt. Raise your hands, receive His love. I'd like for everyone to repeat after me in, the, in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that on the cross, you took my guilt. You took my shame. And you died for it. I believe that you faced hell for me. So that I would not have to go. You rose from the dead. To give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with your Father. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sin to be born again. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Ghost is my helper. And heaven is now my home. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Can I just tell you, death has never had the last word over the resurrected Jesus. My prayer is that now you can now enrich your life with the word of God. It brings me so much comfort, guys. I used to cry out in my grief, God, why aren't you answering my prayers? God, where are you? Why can't I hear your voice? And he spoke to me and said, it's already written. You have to open the book. And the words of all of the stories that impacted your lives from mummy will bring you strength in this sadness. I want to encourage y'all. Listen, Christmas is going to come. His birthday is going to come. Next year, Christmas, February 14th, right, Miss Angela? Very significant date. It's going to come. It's going to come. You. It's going to come. It's going to come, guys. I want to encourage y'all to, if the Holy Spirit has it on your heart to pay somebody a visit, send out a text, make a phone call. Guys, do it. Be obedient. What's on the other side of obedience, guys? So I would like to extend this opportunity to anyone who wants to come and share any stories. I'd like to end this on a good, funny note, guys. And so uh, we have a microphone that, that I can pass around the room. Um, we're all here. We, we know. We, we understand um, that, uh, that 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 mummy was a good man, but he was a cool too. All right. And so uh, we, if 